Hello and welcome to another short data management video. Today I'm going to show you how you can open a NetCDF file using R. We're going to have a quick look at it in R and then we're going to take the data and dump it out into Excel. Today we're going to be looking at a depth profile of data. I'm going to put a link down to that data set in the description and if you want to code along with me you can do that. And I'll also link the code that I'm writing down in the description. If you feel like you need a bit more introduction before we get started, I did another video where I introduced you to NetCDF files and I put a link down to that video in the description and hopefully it should pop up around here somewhere. But without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to need to do is load the packages that we're going to be working with today. So the first one is called our NetCDF and that'll help us handle our NetCDF file. And we're also going to need another package called write Excel and that's going to help us write our data out to Excel. It might be that if you haven't installed these packages already, you need to do that first. So if you want to do that, you can just write install.packages and the name of the package in quotation marks. And I'll do that for the other as well. But I don't need to do that today because I already have them, so I'm going to comment them out. Okay, let's run that. So after those initial steps, the first thing we need to do is load in our data. So we're going to create an object called data. Unfortunately for us, the syntax that we use with our NetCDF is very straightforward. So for opening a NetCDF file, we just write open.nc and then we can paste the name of our file into here. And this should be the same file that you'll be using if you have followed the link in the description. And then we're just going to print that so we can take a look at it. That's print.nc and the name of our object in brackets. If I run that. So what this print.nc does is print all the dimensions that are in the file, all the variable attributes and all the global attributes. It doesn't actually print the data themselves. Uh, we'll get back to how to access those later. But instead, this just provides us with an overview of the file and tells us where the data are going to be, and how the data are going to be structured and all the information we need to know about the data. Okay, so I'm gonna full screen this console and we can scroll up to the top and have a look at what we're seeing here. So at the top of this printout, we can see information about the dimensions. We can see that we have two dimensions in this file, depth and nchar, and we can see that the depth dimension has 168 points. So this is telling us that we have potentially 168 depth points in our file. It doesn't actually tell us anything about what the values for those depths are that will be stored in the data later. So the dimensions tell you about the shape of the file, if you like. They don't tell you about what any of the values are. Here we have then our variables, and we see we have a, a variable at the top, what we call a coordinate variable, um, with a name of depth, and that has a dimension of the same name. So we say that this variable called depth has this dimension depth here. So we have 168 points for this variable. We can see that this is stored in integers as well. So we can't, we won't expect any um, decimal, um, decimal points. We have some variable attributes associated with this variable. We have a fill value, some units, um, a long name, which is our own, um, or the data creator's own words as to what this, um, this variable represents. A standard name, this is taken from the CF standard names. We can go and open those and have a look at those now. So the standard names are like a glossary of terms that have been commonly defined uh, in the CF conventions. So if we want to know exactly what is meant by that standard name, uh, we can come and type it in here. I'll put a link down to this uh, page in the description. Scroll down and find the term that we're looking for. And we have a description here, that depth is a vertical distance below the surface. Obviously this is pretty straightforward for depth, but sometimes you might have some uh, more complicated um, standard names, um, and this can be quite a useful tool. But returning to the NetCDF file now, actually all of these variable attributes are determined by the CF conventions. If I scroll down a little bit further then, we can see below the variable attributes, we have our global attributes. So where variable attributes tell us about each of the variables, 
the global attributes describe the data set as a whole. So we have things like our summary, um, a title, um, some keywords, and some uh, coordinates, um, the time range of the data, things like this. So these are what we call uh, discovery metadata. So this is metadata that someone might use when they're trying to find the data set. So you can see that someone might search by the coordinates, we might search by uh, the time, things like this. I'm going to minimize this again here, we can get back to coding. So let's say we want to take a closer look. Let's say we want to find out what the value for just one of the attributes is. Well, we can do that. We can write in at dot get dot nc. We'll see that often with most of these commands we have dot nc at the end, so this, uh, the syntax is always a bit similar. We then have the object that we're working with again, data. And then let's say we want to find out what the units are for our depth variable. So we can write depth in quotation marks, comma, and then the name of our variable attribute, which is units. If we run that, we can see that in the console below, we've returned meters. So that's how we access our variable attributes. What happens if we want to access one of our global attributes? Well, we can do that in exactly the same way. Again, at .get.nc. Again, our object name, data. And in RNET CDF, we have a special variable name uh, that we can use for global attributes. And that is nc underscore global. And then we just type in the name of the attribute that we want to access. So let's say we want to access the pi name attribute in this case. We can see that it's Nevada. Okay, but enough about metadata. What you really came here today to do is to get the data out of the file. So how do we do that? Well, we can create a object again. We're going to call it chla, which is chlorophyll a. And we're going to write in var.get.nc. Again, the name of our object that always comes first. And then we can write in the variable name. So in this case, it's Clara fill A. If you're wondering where I got that from, if we go back in the console below, we can have a look at the variable names. And the chlorophyll A is here. So this is the name of your variables. And they could be named anything really. This is up to the user. This isn't really standardized. And I'll print that below so we can have a look at it. If I run all of that, we can see we have our data here. In this case, you can see that we actually have a lot of NAs. So these are certain depths in our file where we don't have data. And there's different reasons why this might exist. But I'll show you how to remove those later because we're not interested in those. So I'm going to remove this printout for now. And then I'm going to write out my other variables. So we have our depth variable. like this. We also have a Theo pigments. And again, the syntax is the same in each case. Data um, Theo pigment. And one last variable in this file, filtered volume. Dot get dot nc, the name of our object as always and filtered vol is our variable name. I'm going to run that to make sure I've not made any typos. Okay it's telling us here that one of the variables hasn't been found. This is our filtered vol variable. So I'll scroll up, looks like I've misremembered what the name of that variable is. We can see actually it's filtered volume. So I run that again, and there we go. So now we have all of our data in arrays. How do we get them out into Excel? Well, what I like to do is to create a data frame of the data first. So a data frame is like um, it's like a table basically. 
So we can do that. We create an object called df, which is what's usually used for data frame. Data dot frame. And then we're going to assign each of these um, columns in our data frame. So each of like the columns in our table, um, a name. So we can call the first one depth in capitals is equal to our variable. So I'm saying let's create a column here called depth. Um, and we're going to assign these values from our depth variable. We're going to do the same for our other variables. And that is going to be equal to CHLA. Theo pigments is going to be equal to this one here. I'm going to copy and paste that so I don't make a typo. And filtered volume, we can do that here, equal to filtered vol. So if I run that, make sure everything's gone OK. And we can actually print our data frame as well, so we can have a look at that. And what we see down below is our um, depths. This is an index, so this is just a counter in the first column. Our depths in the second column. And then we have our um, different variables. And we can see that the NAs are all aligned at the same um, depth, which is good. So if we want to drop any of our NAs from our data frame, we can do that quite easily. We just write in df. And we can write na dot omit, so to omit any not a numbers from the data frame, and then the name of the object that we want to drop them for. We run this, and I'll print it again so we can see if that's worked. And now we just have our data um, sampled at the places where we have the values. I'll move this down again, and the very last thing we need to do is write xlsx, the name of our data frame that we want to output, and then we can assign some file path. So I'm just going to write this in my home. Sorry, I need to lead with a slash home hook m. When I give it, going to give it some name, so I will just give it a uh, chlorophyll a data depth profile. So I'm going to run all that together and let's go and take a look at it. So when we open up the data it looks a bit like this. Um, I'm in LibreOffice Calc. Uh, it might be a bit different if you're in Excel. I'm just going to increase the width of these rows. We can see all of our values. And you can even see that the first column has been uh, formatted in bold for us. So there we go. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you have, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like, um, hit the subscribe button, and you'll get to see any other videos I do in the future. Thanks very much for listening.